Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're looking at how we can model combined cables into split cables. So I showed this in a recent video and we had a look at how we could add these detail points on these odd angles, but then this came up, I needed to make some sort of power generation for this and I decided to go with these cables. So we've got them coming out of this main battery unit here and we've got this combined cable here that works into these then splitting up into the individual power cables. And this seemed like quite a fun topic for a video. So I thought I'd have a look at this. Now before we get any further, I'm pretty much cheating on this in many ways. This is not six individual cables that run all the way along. This is one multi-cable that splits up into, or I then use six individual cables, but it's still quite a useful process to show what we're gonna do here. And I do have reasons for this being one cable. If I just isolate this, I need this to be fully solid all the way through because I use Blender for 3D printing. And if I didn't do that, then there'd be resin trapped in the middle. The other thing I'll say before we get any further so I don't waste anyone's time is I am going to be using an add-on for this. It's not a particularly expensive add-on, it's called Cable Rater and I find it really helpful for tasks like this. I've got a couple of videos on Cable Rater, I'll put a playlist in the description. So I've just come back a few stages and we'll have a look at how we're going to do that. Now I'm just going to shift and right click just to get my cursor somewhere a bit more usable and we'll start by sorting out this multi-cable here. Now I'm going to use hard ops for this but you really don't need it for this, I'm just making my life quicker, you could do this manually. Let's just bring in a cylinder and we'll have a look at what this needs to look like. So I'm going to up this to 64 verts just to make it nice and rounded, that's probably excessive. And we've got a radius of 1, so that's 2 millimeters. Let's just G this over here and check that that's about the right size. So we'll come into side view and yeah, I think that's probably going to be an okay width. So we're just going to remember that this is two millimeters wide and that's going to be important for a couple of bits later. Now what I do need to do is come into vertex mode, let's just delete out all of those vertices there and we're going to make it our multi-cable. So the way we're going to do this is we're just going to use hard ops. You don't have to use hard ops, you could just go into vertex mode, let's come into top view a and g and sort of shift and duplicate these and make your six that way but it's not very precise and i like to be as precise as we can if i've got an add-on that does it and hard ops does this nicely so i'm just click q mesh tools and then we're going to do a radial array there and i want six so i want to scroll down to the point we've got six and i reckon there is going to be okay so we'll go with something about there and we'll check if this works on that point in a second but before then let's just sort this out so what i'm going to do is apply my modifiers here so we'll just come here and apply all of those and then we're going to go into vertex mode and then i'm going to make sure that my merge vertices is on and i've got this split edge to faces and the reason we want this is we need to add in some geometry on these connecting points so i'm just going to press g to start moving and then enter without moving it anywhere and then we get that sorted so now i can delete out all of this middle geometry so I don't have a hollow. Now this is important for me because I use Blender for 3D printing. If you don't, this might be less important for you, but we're gonna make a curve out of this. So I think we need to get rid of this geometry anyway. So let's delete out those vertices, go into object mode. I'm gonna delete out that as well. We just don't really need it. And let's just check this is about the right size. So I'm just gonna R, X and 90 and then move that to there and this might work, maybe it's a bit too big, we'll see. So let's bring that over there and I'm gonna right click and convert this to a curve, that's gonna be important. I also need another one of these cylinders, this is probably way too big, in fact actually let's just check this here. So what I'll do is Shift A, Mesh and bring in a cylinder, we've got 64 verts, let's up this to 128 so it's nice and smooth again and then I'm just gonna R, X and then 90 again and then bring this to around here and let's just S to scale that up I need this to be about that big okay so that should be fine let's bring that back a bit and then let's scale this down on the y-axis because that's way too wide and this is going to be our loops that hold the cables together I'll put that off to the side for now and then I'm going to shift and D to duplicate it and we need where we get to the end point of the multi-cable. So let's R and Z, rotate that round there-ish, and then we're just gonna roughly place it in the right position. So somewhere there, maybe? I think that'll probably do for the demo. Maybe let's just 
change it a little bit so it's not perfectly flat and then bring that there. Either way, that will work. So at this point, I'm just about ready to create my cable. And as I said earlier, we're gonna use Cable Rater for this. So Shift, Alt, and C activates Cable Rater and I'm gonna click Create Cable. So I want this going from the center of here to the center of here. So all I do is hold down Control, click this one and it automatically goes to the center of that face and then same for here. And that creates our cable. And we could, if I want to make this bigger or smaller, we'll come to that later. But what I actually want to do is use this curve, remembering we converted this to a curve, as the profile. To do that, I need to set a profile. So I hit A, click on this, and there we go. And it's that easy to do it. Now, that looks okay. We can change around the tension if we want to. So I can hit D to change the tension. And probably about there looks okay. Click to confirm. And then we're gonna go into edit mode and I'm just gonna bring this back a bit. Now, the reason for this is that there's gonna be no overlap here. It's gonna be perfectly on the face. And for 3D printing, I need there to be a slight bit of overlap. So I'm just gonna G and move that across a little bit. Then for this one, I'm actually gonna do that a lot more. I'm gonna G and bring this basically all the way through here. And I'm gonna relatively try to center it up about there. And we're gonna use this as a guide for creating all the individual cables. So this is gonna really help out. Then we're just gonna come back to object mode and we'll create our individual cables. So same thing, Shift, Alt and C, create a cable. I'm gonna control click there and I'm gonna roughly gauge where the center is there. Now I don't want this to have a profile set so I'm gonna hit A and then click nowhere and then we've got that gone and I'm just gonna press S to change the width of this. And we want a width of one to match the size of our other cables. So a radius of one. Now, if I want to make this really tight, I can hold down shift and it will give me a lot more control. So we want something about there. And then as far as I can see, this is okay, but we do want to fill the caps, which means fill the end of this. I didn't want to do this. Oops, sorry, that's me moving around. I didn't want to do this for the other one because I wanted to be able to see where my cable was going. But for this we do, so I'm gonna hit C to fill the caps. And then I'm gonna hit Q, because I want to create another cable that's exactly the same as this one. So we'll now go here, so control click there, guesstimate where the middle of this is, somewhere about here, that feels about right. And then once again, we're gonna to want to make another one. Oh, and that doesn't seem to have its cats filled, so let's hit C, Q, and then control click, and then again, click here. You can see how quick this is to get everything moving. C once again, Oh, and I've got the width slightly off. What did I do here? So let's just S to change the width to 1000. I'm holding down shift to get a bit more finesse on this. Click. I think it might have been because I didn't click when I got there and I must have changed that. Don't worry, we can fiddle with these later to fix them. And then we'll do the same thing. Q, control click. Click without control there. Again, we've got the width set correctly. We do need to hit C to have our fill caps. And that looks pretty good. Notice this one's a little bit off. We're just gonna come back and fix that later. It's gonna be no problem. Then same thing again. Q, control click there, roughly click there. That one needs a bit of fiddling with later. C, Q, control click there. Click here and once again, C, and we're good to go. Click. Now at this point, I want this one brought back. So we're just gonna go into edit mode. G to bring that back right in so that we don't have that overlap anymore. And then we can fiddle around with all of these. So firstly, there were a couple of these that were the wrong size. So let's come to this one. And we're gonna press Shift, Alt and C and we can edit the cable. Here we do have our width being wrong. So let's just S and now we can change this so we can go back into editing it. I'm gonna hold down Shift to get more fine control and click. And if I want to, I want to make this more round, I can change how rounded this is, this bevel resolution. So I'm gonna press V, I can scroll up and make this nice and round. I'm gonna go up to like 32. And if I want to, I can do this for each of them. Now this one, the size was wrong again. So Shift, Alt and C, and then edit the cable, S, and then just bring that up to one. And then once again, I'm gonna V, scroll up and get this nice and rounded to 32, okay? So we can do that for each of these if we want to. I'm just gonna select all of them, go into edit mode, and I'm just gonna select all of these points. And remember, bearing in mind we want a little bit of overlap, I'm just gonna G, move those all just a tiny bit in. So we're pretty sorted. Now this one was a little bit off, but it looks okay. I'm just gonna G it up a little bit. And this one I think was a little bit 
off as well. We probably could have left the curve of this one sticking out a bit and then got those perfect. I think that's gonna work for here. Just gonna sort out the rest of these. So it doesn't really take long to do it this way. The other alternative, if you want to, if I just click on this last one, is we can come to our object data properties here and then change our resolution here to 32. So that is the other option. You don't have to do it via cable rater. I am gonna to want to move the ends of each of these cables. Let's select all of those and go into edit mode. So I'm just gonna geo move that one in a little bit and then geo move that one in a bit and then same with each of these. I do wish, this is my only complaint about Cable Rater, I do wish I could set it so it automatically had the cable a little bit pushed into the face, um, just for sort of 3D printing purposes, but I can see why other people would find that annoying. So there we go. Now we just need to add in our additional loops here. So I'm just gonna click this, shift select on this section that we made earlier, and once again, shift alt and C, we want to add or edit a segment, there we go, it's now been placed here. I haven't had to faff around with getting it in place or getting the oranges on top of each other. Nothing to do with that. Just D to move it round or down to about, let's say there. Onto A to add an array. And then we just need to S to move that along a bit. And then we want to C to add in our count and up that. So there we go. Now, if you're really not liking this, which you might not, you can see that this distorts them slightly you can get away with that not happening. So to deal with that, what we're gonna do is come back, mesh, bring in a plane, let's just move that to anywhere, S to scale it up so we can see it, and Control and A and apply the scale. I'm not sure I've applied the scale for this one either actually. No, I haven't, so let's Control and A and apply the scale. So we're gonna click, shift click, and then we're gonna do the same thing again. Add a Reddit segment, D, move it along a bit, A to add an array, S to move it along a bit more, and then C to up the count and scroll up by one. That's way badly spaced. There we go. So let's fix that to there. And then this is the one thing we are gonna have to be a little bit old about. This is quite an old style technique. We're gonna click on that. So note we've clicked on our object first that we want to put on these. Shift click there, and I need to get these origins in the same place. You can do that the standard way of moving the cursor to this object and then moving this to the cursor. I'm just gonna press Alt and A because I've got machine tools and it has a really helpful align function which is gonna save me a load of time. And then I'm gonna click on the object, shift click there, Control and P, parent it. And then on this, I come to not my object data properties, but the object properties. I don't know why these are different, but anyway, they are. Come to instances, click on face, and now they get instanced, or this gets instanced on each of the faces without being distorted. So I can now come here, Control and A, make instances real, and then H that, and I've got everything done. And this is now real geometry. So there we go. All ready for 3D printing, with the one exception that this curve needs to have it's caps filled for 3D printing. So object data properties, and then where have we got geometry here, and then object, and then click fill caps. And then we've got that now with the filled caps, so we can do that later. So there we go. There is our multi-cable splitting out to individual cables. And with a couple of add-ons, this becomes a pretty quick and easy thing to do. It's just knowing the techniques are there. If you feel the video is worthy, it would be really appreciated if you hit that like button. It always really helps out. The file for this turret is available on the Patreon at the 3D Design File tier. Or if you're interested in giving just a few dollars a month to the channel, then you can go at the lower level where for a few dollars a month you get these videos a week early, ad-free, and other great perks like being on the Patreon Discord. Finally, if you haven't got any of these add-ons and they're tempting you, there are some affiliate links in the description, and any purchases from those cost you no extra, but give a little bit of money to help out the channel. Have a great day, guys.